Hey guys, in this one, I put together a load of battery saving tips if you're using the iPhone 12 or to be honest, any iPhone. These tips can help with your daily battery life, but also the longevity and health of your battery overall. So let's just get right into the first one. Before we get into all the battery saving tips, you might wanna go and have a look at your battery chart so you know actually what's happening with your usage of the phone. So come into settings right here, and then we can just scroll down to battery. And this is gonna give you all of your battery usage over the last few days. You can switch it between 10 days of last usage. So you can see how much of the battery you've used each day over those last 10 days. And then you can see the usage over the last 24 hours. And you can see that yesterday my usage was pretty normal. There wasn't really anything too drastic. It was just a drip down of the battery. And then this morning I gave it a charge up to about 86%. Down below that graph, you can also see the screen on time and screen off. You can also click on the graph to narrow down any areas where you may be using the battery. So if I just click right here, you can see for this short time period, if I scroll down, these are the apps that used up most of that battery. So that was quite a heavy usage period. And you can see I was using PixArt, so I was editing some images and doing some things on that app. So that was the main culprit. Now. If you were using an app, this is obviously normal, but if you had a big drop and you didn't really know why, you could drill down and really see which app was using the battery and if you actually can go into the app and turn some of the settings off to save your battery. So I can come down here to Twitter and I can actually hit Twitter once and you can see how much of the screen on time that it used. So it used four minutes, YouTube used six minutes and two minutes. This was within the time period of six to seven o'clock or 18 to 1900 hours yesterday. So I can tell exactly which apps are causing any battery drain. You can see I didn't really use my phone too much. And if you just hit the battery level icon right here, it goes back to the bigger view so you can see everything at once. So the first tip is to use dark mode and also a dark screensaver. So we can come into settings right here and then choose display and brightness. And then you can see light and dark. Light mode is going to take up way more battery life because all of the pixels in the screen right now are being turned on and bright. So that is obviously taking up battery because the iPhone 12, all of them from the mini to the Pro Max have OLED displays. They can really take advantage of dark mode. Every black pixel on here is using pretty much zero battery because they're literally turned off. Auto lock is something where you can probably save a bit of battery life as well. Obviously the shorter time period you have for auto lock, it's going to take up less battery. I have it on 30 seconds, but this is one of the features where, hey, if you like auto lock to be like a minute or two minutes, then just leave it on what you like. Your usage of mobile data networks is going to massively change how much of the battery life you actually use in your phone. So you can come to settings and then if we scroll up to mobile data. Now, if you're in the States or some different countries, this may be called cellular data, I think. Anyway, it's pretty much the same thing. And right now I'm actually at home and I'm on Wi-Fi. So I have mobile data turned off. I really don't use my mobile data that much and it massively, massively saves my battery life. The iPhone 12 does support 5G as well. If you use 5G and you're connected to 5G networks, it's going to take up a lot of battery life. You may wanna to switch to 4G only or 5G auto, which auto switches between the networks. In any case, the more that you use mobile networks, the faster your battery will drain. If at all possible, just switch to Wi-Fi only if you're indoors, it's gonna save a ton of your battery. Next up is vibration, haptics, and silent mode. So we'll come into settings once more, and then we can go into sound and haptics. And I have a lot of the vibrations off, so I don't vibrate on ring, I don't vibrate on silent. I actually have the phone on silent as well. So ringtones, vibrations, these are all things that are going to use your battery life, especially the vibration motor. Each time that clicks, it is gonna use a bit of battery. I have system haptics on. I really, really love haptics. I enjoy using them. And so I keep them on, even though they are gonna take up more battery life. Next up is background app refresh. This is going to take up a lot of your battery unnecessarily. So come into settings. Then actually we can go down to general this time. And in general, you should see this background app refresh menu. There are just so many apps that you do not need to refresh in the background. Airbnb, I do not need to use that very often. And when I do, I can open up the app and it can refresh. However, some apps I do need to refresh in the background. Any news apps, any finance apps that you have, 
that feed data to your phone. Maybe you're using some widgets that have weather or news or financial markets. You're obviously gonna have to leave these on. Currency does not need to be on. I don't need that refreshing in the background. eToro, Fiverr, Upwork, you get the idea. If you really don't need these, you don't need to have the background app refresh on, but you can come up to the very top and choose some universal settings. So we'll click on this one. How do you want these apps to behave? So do you want these to refresh on Wi-Fi and mobile data? You probably don't need that. Wi-Fi is absolutely fine. You can turn every single one of them off. And if we go back, you can see they're all off now. This isn't really going to change your usage of the phone too much, but depending on what you want, you might wanna just switch it to Wi-Fi only and then go and turn each one off that you think you might not need. Mail services definitely take up a lot of battery life. So we'll come to settings and then we will go down to mail as you can see here. And then you should have this accounts section depending on how many actual accounts that you have linked up. I have three, so I'm just gonna press the accounts option. You can see right down here, fetch new data is turned to push. If I click on push, you can see I have a couple of different accounts. Actually, some of them are on fetch, some of them are on push. Push is going to take up a lot more of your battery life. It's basically going to constantly flood your phone with messages like, hey, is there any new mail? No, there isn't, or yes, there is. And obviously most of the time there isn't. You can therefore turn them all to fetch, and this means that your phone only fetches that data at given time intervals, and you can change this. So if I go into Outlook and actually change this to fetch, you can see all of those options disappear and then I'll come out of there. iCloud as well, I will turn to fetch and come out of there. Everything is on fetch now. Then down in the fetch settings, you could leave this on automatically if you want, but to save the most battery life, you could either have hourly or manually. Again, this is gonna differ from each person. If you're someone that receives a lot of work emails, then you may want to go to a push style so that you get those notifications even if you haven't checked, but certainly this is something that drains battery and you can change it to fetch if you like. Location services also drain a lot of your battery life. You can come into the settings and then we can go to privacy right here and then we can come into location services. Everything that has an arrow, either a gray one, a purple one or a filled in purple color is something that has recently used location services. Location services obviously take battery life, take system resources and take data as well. And you can see PixArt, which is a photo editor, has actually used my location recently. And there's absolutely no reason whatsoever for a photo editor to use my location. That is going to be draining resources unnecessarily. So you can come right in here and actually just turn it to never allow location access. So that's gonna save battery life. Ask next time is gonna be super annoying. When you open the app, it's gonna ask you. It's annoying and I wouldn't use it. Or you can just turn it to whilst using the app. Really no reason why this app should know my location. Also precise location, definitely turn that off. You might wanna go through all of your apps and see that. Do you really want an app knowing exactly your address? Probably not. So you can turn that off or just go to never, then go back and that should definitely reduce my battery life. You can do that for pretty much all of your apps as you can see here. So that's gonna save a lot of life overall. Staying in exactly the same screen and right down at the bottom, you can see system services. Again, click on this one. Once more, we can see that a lot of apps are using my location. It really just isn't needed. Location-based alerts, I don't need those. Location-based suggestions, these are basically ads, don't need those either. Motion calibration and distance, I guess you would need that on for some certain things, but most of these you can actually turn off. A couple that I would leave on is find my phone, of course, just in case, and emergency calls and SOS, definitely keep those on again, just in case. But you can come down to product improvement. You do not need to send this data to Apple. It's gonna take up resources, so you can turn all of those off. Routing and traffic or routing and traffic, you might wanna turn on if you're using some map applications, so just bear that in mind. Now coming on to some tips that might help with the longevity of your battery overall. So if we come into settings and then come down to battery once more, then we can come into battery health right here. And this is obviously on 100, it's an iPhone 12, it's just been out a month or so. But really some general tips. Firstly, lithium ion batteries like the ones in the iPhone really do not like heat in any way, shape or form. So if your phone or your battery gets hot in any way, then it can contribute to the reduction in longevity and life of your battery. So heat is an absolute no-no. So if you're playing games for a long time, using your phone for a long time, and it is heating up, just know that that could affect battery life over the long term. 
Secondly, you can see this option here, optimized battery charging. This is something that I would suggest having on. This is a lot of software services that try to keep the longevity of your battery. So with lithium ion batteries, it's not recommended to charge them up to 100% and keep them on 100% charge for long periods. It's not good for the health of the battery. A lot of us, most of us charge overnight. So this is gonna be an issue. Leaving this optimized battery charging feature on should reduce some of that. It's going to basically know your routine. Maybe you have an alarm on in the morning and it's actually going to drip feed the last 20 or 10% of the battery so you're not up there at 100% for too long. Fast charging is also not good for modern lithium ion batteries. It's not actually anything to do with how quick the battery charges, but the faster you charge a battery, the more heat is generated. And like I said, heat is the main enemy for a battery. It's always a balancing act trying to turn off features that you don't need whilst keeping ones that actually are useful and make the phone a nice experience to use. But hopefully these were helpful and did help you out. Any more that I didn't list, please put them in the comments below as well. That's it for this one though. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't done already and I'll see you in the next one.